I'm out standing at Wolverine Lake. We hiked out here for the first trip. And along that hike, we noticed a caribou that just was right near the lake, acting very strange. And when we got closer to it, it really wasn't moving around much, but it seemed to be ducking its head and in a very defensive mode. And when we got closer, we saw something small running around it and kind of jumping and nipping at it. I thought for a second it's a fox because it looked kind of lighter colored. But then when we got closer, there was actually a wolverine jumping and, and nipping at this wounded caribou. It wasn't really bothered by us being there. It seemed to want to keep that caribou in check and make sure we weren't trying to challenge it for its meal. But it came towards us a little bit, checked us out, sniffed us a bit, went back to the caribou, came back towards us, and then eventually ran off, I guess, deciding we weren't worth the trouble or the fight. So we've nicknamed this lake Wolverine Lake because of that. Getting back to the science, when we first came out here, only three weeks ago we were out here the first time, this thaw slump was much smaller. The part where I'm standing right now wasn't even thawed yet. So in a typical year, the permafrost only thaws maybe up to a meter in most of these places. So from the top of the vegetation, it only ever gets thawed down to about here. But when you have a thaw slump like this, what happens is somehow permafrost gets exposed to sun and to heat during the summer and it melts, slumps away, and thus creates a sort of a chain reaction where as it slumps away, it exposes more frozen material that's never seen sunlight or warmth for the last several thousand years. And then that melts away too. And what happens is you get a huge slump forming where more and more material just keeps falling away and falling away. Permafrost has been often described as a ticking time bomb of a part of the global carbon cycle. There's a very, very huge amount of organic matter that's just been frozen in this permafrost for thousands and thousands of years. And what we see happening in thaw slumps such as this is that carbon melts out of the soil and gets released. And what we've already seen is that when you expose these molecules to sunlight, they become more available and more readily usable by microbes. And what that means is that microbes can eat that carbon and respire it into CO2, which is of importance because CO2 is a heat trapping gas that we are interested in understanding how much of the carbon that's now in permafrost is gonna eventually end up as CO2. Mm -hmm. 